Second Chronicles chapter 18 Now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor and abundance. Now that would just be a period there and besides a comma, things would be good because the riches and the honor came from God from doing right. And the problem rises. Because we can't stop, we got to continue reading the chapter. Where the Bible says, now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor and abundance and join affinity with Ahab. Ahab was the king of Israel. Ahab was a wicked king. Ahab was married to Jezebel. Ahab, you can't say nothing right about him, but there was one time he actually really did get right at, uh, at the council of uh, Elijah from God. But everything else about Ahab Here's this righteous king who's doing right, hanging out with, with somebody who's doing wrong, a king. And you know what it pictures. It pictures the Christian who's doing right, who's half in the world and half doing right. And a mess is going to happen. And it, after certain years, he went down to Ahab to Samaria. And you say, well, what's that mean went down? Israel's up north. Judah is down south. How did he go down? Remember, Jerusalem is on a mountain. And that answers your question. When, when, when the life of Jesus, as he's going up, he was going up to Jerusalem. And be like, wait a minute. How can you go up to Jerusalem again? It would be up, he was in the northern part of Israel. Well, Jerusalem is a big mountain. Mount Zion. That's what it means going down and going up. From the mountain point of view. And Samaria is the capital of Israel. Actually, I don't believe it's the, I don't know if it's the capital yet, but it, it is the capital of Israel. Uh, it is the, the, where the Samaritans, the half Jews, and the half Gentiles. And they have killed sheep and oxen for him in abundance. And for the people that he had with him. And persuaded him to go up with him to Ramoth Gilead. Now this killing a sheep and oxen is. I'm not sure if it's a religious thing. Because he's going to call his gods. But probably Jeho Jehoshaphat showing up. It's probably a banquet. It's probably a, a Baptist fellowship. Come join. We got the food. Come join us. I mean, after all, if we, read, the, read the context. Read the Bible, folks. We're going to have a Baptist fellowship so people will come to our church and will and we'll be part of our church. They'll know Jesus Christ by the fellowship. And you, bring, you have the fellowship and all that, and there's very little about Jesus spoken. I mean, he brought the food, and... And uh, Jehoshaphat's there. He says, go up with me to Ramah Gilead. Now, now have you eaten, come join me. And Ahab, king of Israel, said unto Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, Will thou go with me to Ramah Gilead? And he answered him, I am as thou art. What a bad, terrible, rotten word to say. And that's what the Christian and that's what the church is saying today. They are saying, I am as thou art. Ahab was wicked. Ahab was not walking with God. Ahab is walking, we're going to see, in all kinds of idolatry. He's walking with false prophets. He's walking with Baal. And Jehoshaphat, the, the, the type of the Christian, the type that's walking with God, the type of the righteous, is saying, I am as thou art. And that is the perfect words that you can say at the church of, of, of Jesus Christ today. It is as thou art, worldly and wicked. I could just picture God up in heaven smacking off. Oh, come on. You say you don't believe me? Read Revelation 3 when, when, when God describes his church age. It says it makes him sick. And my people as thy people. You mean the, the, the Levites? You mean the priests? You mean the the Judah Judeans, the Judas, Judaites? I don't even know. 
Oh, that's just called Judah. You mean the Benjaminites? You mean Judah, where Jesus Christ comes from? The, 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 that line? They are all like Israel? I don't think so. And then you lump the Christians all together. We're just like you. And that's why the church has a stink today. We are not like the world, but guess what? The church acts like the world. There's no difference. And this is in Second Chronicles 18. He just had a revival in chapter 17. This is American history we're reading, American future. We've already had the revivals in America, and we're in chapter 18, 6 plus 6 plus 6. We are lumping with the, with the wrong crowd. We are saying, hey, we're just like you. Come as you are. All are welcome. Isn't that what the churches are saying? We don't care if you're a sodomite. We don't care if you're an adulterer. We don't care what your sins are. Just come and join us. We're just like you. And too much of a chance is 95% of the people that profess this are just like the world. They are unsaved. They're lost. Jehoshaphat is of the Lord. And walks wrong. And we will be with thee in, in the war. And I wouldn't want to go to war with, with a bunch of people who is not on God's side. If I was saved, we're running almost like with Asa. Asa had God's blessing and all that. He was in a war one time, called upon God, and God helps him out. The next war, you know, he goes gets human counsel. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, now, this is where Jehoshaphat is right. He, he's burdened. He knows he's doing wrong. It's like Solomon with that e Egyptian wife. Well, she's my wife, but I can't bring her to a holy place. Duh! If you can't bring it into the church house, if you can't bring it to the temple, must be something wrong with it. Jehoshaphat is thinking in the back of his head, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. He opened up his mouth before he sought the Lord. And that will get you in trouble. He should have prayed first, then opened up his mouth. Now he's already committed himself. Now I'll ask God. Therefore the king of Israel gathered together the prophets. He said, Amen, prophets. 400 men. Well, as we learn later on, we got the scripture. These are the 400 prophets of Jezebel. These are the 400 prophets of Baal, not God. And we're going to see later on in this chapter. Ahab calls his prophets, his, his wife's prophets. And yet, like I said, with Ronald Reagan, Nancy Reagan, uh, most of the White House agenda, when President Reagan had to go somewhere, they couldn't do nothing until they saw Nancy Reagan's uh, psychic advisor. But then, yet, he was still shot. And I can't think about the one that, that Bradley or Brady that ended up in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. Like the psychic that, that said, you know, uh, this family's dead and, and, and they find them ten years later. Called lying prophets. Shall we go to Raymond Gilead to battle or shall we forbear? And they said, go up, for God will deliver it into the king's hand. Go up. Go. Go and prosper. May the battle be with yours, or whatever. They're lying. And we know that by the scriptures. The conclusion of the story is these guys are liars. But Jehoshaphat said, see, the, the, the Holy Spirit's working with him. The back of his head is like, never go with the crowd. 400 men or so, yeah, 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 yeah. They're a bunch of yes men. 
These are as rotten as Rehoboam going to the young people of him to seek counsel. These kings are getting terrible advice. And Jehoshaphat stands up and says, but, said, but Jehoshaphat said, is there not a prophet of the Lord besides that we may inquire of him? Jehoshaphat is telling you that these 400 guys are not of God. Why didn't he go home? He knows they're wrong. And then there are people out there who are Christians. They know their fellowship with people they're not supposed to. They know the Bible tells you you're not supposed to. But yet, they still are part of those people who will drag them down. And then when their life is messed up, oh God, why did this happen? God already told you. There are certain people you do not associate yourself with. There are certain situations you don't associate yourself with. There are certain places you don't associate yourself with. The Bible says to stay from all parents of evil. If they don't want to have anything to do with Jesus Christ, if they don't want to have anything to do with God, you are to separate yourself from them. But their mama, their daddy, their son, their daughter, their uncle Joe, their, I don't care. Jehoshaphat should have said, I'm out of here. Those are not prophets of God. Bye. See you. That's warning number one, by the way, for Jehoshaphat. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man by whom we may acquire of the Lord, but I hate him. You know, I hate that guy. That guy always speaks Bible. That guy's always quoting scripture. That guy's always right. You know, says he's right. That guy is always, always, always. He makes us look bad. We can't live in sin. We can't do what we want to do when that guy's around. He insults us. For he never prophesied. <coughs> excuse me. Never pro Processize good unto me, but always evil. Now that right there is an example where it says, Woe unto them to call evil good and good evil. Because I guarantee Micaiah, which is his name, does not process not does not have prophecy of evilness. He tells Ahab, listen, you're doing wrong. Ahab, you're not doing it right. Ahab, you're serving the wrong God. And that's not what Ahab wants to hear. So he calls Micaiah's message evil, where what Ahab wants to do is good, even though Ahab is doing evil. So there's an illustration calling good evil and evil good. I bet you Micaiah spoke to uh, Ahab. Get out of the mess that you're in. Get rid of that wife you have. Well, you, you can't fabricate divorce. He could have stoned her to death for all the, the stuff that she'd done by the law. And been proper. But always evil. The same as Micaiah, the son of Ilam. I I and Jehoshaphat said, let not the king say so. Warning number two. From Ahab. There is a prophet of the Lord. I hate him. Blah, 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 blah. And Jehoshaphat says, shut up. I want him. And the king of Israel called for one of his officers and said, fetch quickly Micaiah, the son of Imla. Why didn't, why didn't Jehoshaphat call one of his officers to go get him? So I read the Bible and I ask myself, why, 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 why? If this guy was truly the prophet of the Lord, the one that really loved the Lord and wanted to do right, he should have been the one that, matter of fact, Jehoshaphat should have been running to Micaiah himself. Why? So one of uh, King Ahab, one of King Ahab, I want to say Ahab, but one of King Ahab's men won't get the chance to follow up Micaiah, which does happen. I mean, 
He doesn't get fouled up, but he tries to follow him up. Tries to make Micaiah uh, not as proper as he is. Another warning, number three. Out of Jehoshaphat's mouth himself. And the king of Israel, uh, verse number nine, the king of Israel, the king of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, set either of them on his throne. What's Jehoshaphat having a throne in Samaria for? His reign is down in Jerusalem. Jehoshaphat is sitting with the wrong people, fellowshipping with the wrong people. He is reigning in the wrong place. Did you get that? Sitting on their throne? Their throne. In Samaria. Jehoshaphat does not belong there. That's not his area. He is reigning with Ahab. Clothed in their robes, and they sat in a void place at the entering in the gate of Samaria. Get that. The judgment place of Samaria, and there is, Je there is Jehoshaphat sitting on a throne that's his. And all the prophets prophesied before them. The 400 men are sitting there prophesying. You shall do good, King. Yay, positive thoughts. Think positive. Amen, positive, positive. You're going to be victorious. You're going to be wonderful. Rah, 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 rah. Bail this, bail that. Bail out. Joel asked if it should have done. Should have got the bucket because I tell you right now, Ahab's going to kick the bucket. And Zedekiah, the son of Chaniah, had made him horns of iron. Now, horns in the Bible represent strength. And this seems to be the, the, the big dog of the 400. Thus saith the Lord. Now, just because somebody says, thus saith the Lord, please, please, please don't think they're of God. Because you read in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 that there are ministers of Satan. There are other Jesuses. There are other Gospels. There are other spirits. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. This is another prophet. This is not the prophet of God. Thus saith the Lord. He's speaking in a lie in the name of God. There are men out there who will say, Thus saith the Lord, and they are lying to you. The Bible says, Try the spirits, whether they be right or whether they be wrong. With these thou shalt push Syria until they be consumed. And all the prophets, the 499, prophesied so, saying, Go up the river of Gilead and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it, and deliver it into the hand of the king. It's follow the leader. Yes, men. Yeah, king, go with these irons. Yeah, let's do what Zedekiah said. Yeah. He's got 400 against one, the wrong odds. And he goes with the crowd and dies. A true Bible-believing Christian with a King James Bible is not the majority. He's the minority of all minorities. And the messenger that went to call Micaiah spake to him, saying, Behold, the words of the prophets do declare. Look at that. Declare. Declare good. And what was the first words recorded of saying? Yay, has God said? Well, let me translate that for you if you want me to. Yea, thus saith the Lord. And God didn't say nothing. You better get that. You better learn that. 
There are men out there saying, Thus saith the Lord, yes, saith the Lord, and God is. I didn't say that. Michael, did you hear me say that? I didn't hear you say nothing, Lord. You gotta be one of Satan's men. You gotta be very careful. Men will lie to you. Read John 8 44. Declare good, positive thinking to the king with one assent. Be with us. Be unity with us. Be the great one. Well, didn't they try to do that at the Tower of Babel? We'll be one in one religion. God went down there. No, you're not. Because of this, all this, I'll make you press one for English now. Let thy word, therefore, I pray thee, be like one of theirs, the false prophets. And speak thou good. Then I tell you that uh, that Jehoshaphat should went down himself because there'd be somebody trying to pervert Micah, and that's exactly what happened. Goes up to Micah and says, "Listen, we want you to speak a lie." They know it's a lie because they already know Micah speaks for God the truth, and the truth is evil, according to Ahab. There are many people who are going to die and go to hell, but to them that's a great positive message because they heard their prophet tell them that. And their prophet lied to them. Did you get that? Did you strongly get that message? And then when God does send that one prophet with the truth to them and they disregard it, God had done his part. Let's keep reading. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, even what my God, no, he said, My God, not your God, my God saith, that will I speak. Amen, Micaiah. Handle the sword, stick to it. And the king hated him, King Ahab. But you can still be honest and be true to God. Yea, let God be true or any man a liar. And when he was come to the king, the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go up to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we forbear? And he said, Go ye up and prosper, and they shall be delivered into the, your hand. Wait a minute. That's what the, the, the prophets have been saying. You mean God was really with him? God was working with those prophets. He followed what, what they said. And the king said to him, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou shalt say nothing but the truth to me in the name of the Lord? Oh, I get it now. Micaiah was using sarcasm. It's wrong to be a sarcastic kind of preacher. Not for Micaiah. Yeah, that's what you guys said. Go do it, king. Go. <laughs> and Ahab says, I know you're lying to me. Well, that's what you wanted. That's what you wanted me to say, didn't you? That's what your guy came down and said, listen, agree with these idiots. I'm 400 idiots. I mean, these prophets. Believe them. So I gave you the message you wanted, and you don't even still believe me, say. You know, there are some Christians out there, if they try to live worldly, they try to do wrong, the world knows who you are. He ain't fooling Ahab. He knew right... Okay, now, let me ask you a question. If he knew what that go up and prosper by Micaiah, and he says, listen, I know you're not telling me the truth. Why does he still follow his 400 prophets? Who are a lie. And that will answer your question. Why did grandma die in that religion and go to hell? I don't get it. Ahab. He is so into believing the lie. He wants that lie. He wants those 400 prophets. To, and he wants to believe in them. He wants that truth that is not the truth. And that's what brings him down to hell. 
God will give you what you want. You better be careful what you ask for. Ahab wanted to believe a lie just as it was the very truth if it was our God's mouth, which is not. Religion is a lie that will kill, and men believe in religion over God. Don't you ever dare be call a uh, born again Bible believing Christian. Don't you ever call that a religion. Then he said, I did see all Israel scattered upon the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. The shepherd would be King Ahab. He's going to die. Remember David, the first shepherd? Uh, there was a shepherd of the flock, literally, and then as a king. And the Lord said, These have no master. Ahab. Let them return, therefore, every man to his house in peace. Go home, troops. Don't you dare go to fight. God is not with you. That's what he's saying. And the king of Israel, Ahab, said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would not prophesy good unto me but evil? What's the evil? Go home. God's not with you. That's evil. Where it's going to kill you? Some people, when you tell them about Jesus Christ and they continue in their religion and they continue the way of hell, when you tell them about Jesus Christ, that's evil. I'm sorry. We're not going to get 100% people saved on the streets. Every single gospel track is not going to be received with love. And it's not going to be received when believing Jesus Christ as their Savior. It's going to be offensive to some, and some of uh, some people. If you don't, if you have not realized it yet, some people will call you evil and wicked. Get that, because their way is just as better and just as good, because it has four thousand four hundred lying prophets to go with it. Where we can't even stand in our own church for the truth. When you get someone like Brother Jerry, and, and, and the whole church is against him for what he does in the Lord. And when he goes on the streets, and he gives out gospel tracts, and he holds his sign just like we do, there will some people go up to him and say, you know what, your ways, you know, what you're telling me is evil. I'm going to stay with my way. Thank you very much. Again he said, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne. Not bad for Micaiah. You see what Micaiah happened? You see what, what, what went on? He stood for the Lord. He did what was right. He did not be a yes man. And God revealed himself to him. Literally. He said, I saw, you think he's a liar? No. And he says, I saw the Lord sitting on his throne. Look at that. I've never seen the Lord on his throne yet. Micaiah did. And all the host of heaven, the, the, the angels, the cherubims, the four and twenty-four elders. He saw it all. Before John saw it. In the book of Revelation. On his right hand, on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? All right, the Lord speaks. I have a mission for Ahab. He's going to die in Ramoth Gilead. I need someone to help me. <laughs> he asked that to Isaiah. I said, Yeah, send me. I'll go, Lord, you know, to tell the people. I say, Yay, yeah, Lord, here I am. Send me. I'll go. 
You know, too few people will say, Lord, yeah, I'll go, send me. And here we're going to get, yeah, Lord, send me. And it's going to be for a death and the lying to a man. And the Lord said, Who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one spank saying after this manner, and another saying after this manner. What's the talk? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea what the angels would say to a remark like that. But you know what? According to Job 1 and 2, there's somebody up in heaven too. Let's read on. And then there came out a spirit. Let me ask you a question. Can you see Satan? So he's got to be a spirit, right? And stood before the Lord. Where can you find that in the Bible? Job 1 and Job 2. And said, where can you find Satan standing before the Lord and speaking? Job 1 and Job 2. I will entice him. I'll take your challenge. You remember the book of Job? Remember who spoke first about Job? Was it Satan or was it God? Yeah, have you considered my servant Job? And the Lord said, wherewith? He said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. Now, if you read John 8:44. You know who that liar is. That liar is Satan. Look what he said. I will go and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. Those 400 prophets are false prophets of Satan. And it's out of Satan's own mouth. Job 1, Job 2, 2 Chronicles 18, John 8, 44. Second, Second Corinthians chapter 11. Paul says there are, there are ministers are of Satan, of Lucifer, of the devil. There's another Jesus. There's another spirit. There's another gospel. These men are speaking religiously. They're speaking in the tongue of Satan. And God allows it. If you can get people to get that. If you can get Christians to understand that. There are Baptist churches out there today where out of that pulpit Satan speaks in a man. And God says, let's read on. He said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. Read 2 Corinthians 11. And the Lord said, Thou shalt entice him. Thou shalt go and prevail. Go out and do even so. God says, Go ahead and do it. Would, would, would God do a such thing? Therefore, now therefore, behold, the Lord had put a lying spirit in the mouth of these prophets. And the Lord has spoken evil against thee. If you got a preacher that lies to you out of the pulpit, it is from the authorship of Satan, given permission by God, the authority of God, Job 1 and Job 2, and don't you dare lie to me. Because you will get up there and say, well, yeah, life problems happen because God, can, God gives Satan the ability to do it, hold Satan on a leash, and, you know, Satan can't do what only what God gives him permission to do, but a false prophet and all that out of the pulpit be sent by Satan? No, that never happens. God wouldn't do that. 
And I'll tell you what God would also do through Satan and his false prophets. He put them in seminary. He put them in schools and colleges that supposedly teach the Bible. Second Chronicles chapter 18. John 8:44. Second Corinthians chapter 11. Job 1 and Job 2. How about when uh, God provoked David to number Israel in one place, and the other place, Satan provoked David to number Israel? Now, after that, you would think Jehoshaphat would be on his horse, running back to Jerusalem as quick as lightning can fly. You would think a Bible-believing Christian, a born-again Christian, once he realizes that the church he in could be possibly spoken of Satan, that minister at the pulpit could be of Satan, and then he still sits there and does nothing. May even throw his King James Bible out. And his life starts dying Ahab and Zedekiah the son of Chenai that's the guy who that's the that's the main leader of these guys seems like he's the one that had the iron horns came there and smoked Micaiah on the cheek have you ever been smoking being a, being a Christian speaking the right words of God in the church services with the 400 people that have been counted? Well, who do you think you are? Smack, smack. And said, which way went the Spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? My case is going to be, I ain't speaking of Satan. I'm speaking of the God. Don't you dare tell me I'm speaking of, of a lying spirit. And Micaiah said, Behold, thou shalt see on that day when thou shalt go in the inner chamber to hide thyself. He said, I'll tell you how true it is. When this is all done, you're going to be hiding in your little bomb shelter. You're going to be scared. You're going to be underneath the bed. You're going to hide yourself in fear. You little wimp. Then the king of Israel said, Take ye my care and carry him back to Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son. And say, Thus saith the king, Put this fellow in prison. Oh, boy, that's what Asa did. You see what Asa started? When a prophet comes up to you, speaks in God, and pray, if it offends you, start putting him in jail. And feed him with the bread of affliction. That'd be moldy, crusty, old bread. It ain't fresh. And probably very little of it. Just for you to survive. Just enough. You want stories about that? You read of POWs and MIAs. And consecration camps in, uh, in Asia. In Korea. In Vietnam. In Japan. How when these men came back, their stomachs were so small, you couldn't give them a, a, a meal if you wanted to. Their stomachs had shrunken so little, I mean, you have to start them almost like, like bottle feeding all over again and work their way up to solid food. And with water affliction, I don't even want to describe what that water would be like. Phil. Read about Richard Rundberg and being in prison for Jesus. Until I return in peace. In other words, keep this guy in, in jail because I'm coming back in peace. And I'll show you, Micaiah, who, 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 who. And Micaiah said, if thou certainly return in peace, if you do come home, 
if you do come to the prison to see me, then has not the Lord spoken by me? And he said, Hearken all ye people. He told King Ahab, Listen, if you do come, I am not a prophet of God. You're going to die. Attention all soldiers. Do not go. One man against 400 prophets. I wonder who wins. 400 liars. One truth. One honest. Why is the world like it is today? Why is the church messed up today? 400 versus 1. And let's see who follows who. Okay? Let's see how the story ends. 400 liars versus 1 truth. Ready? So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went up to Ramoth Gilead. Look at that. They took the 400 liars. Why is the church in America failing? Why is the church of Jesus Christ soiled? Because you'll believe any Bible but the Bible. The King James 1611. You'll believe anything but the truth. You'll do anything in your church but what is right. You'll take the 400 prophets that lie, that God told you lies, <coughs> over the one man that will speak the truth. You did it with Jeremiah. Jeremiah was one man that spoke the truth, and all that happened with Jeremiah. And how many converts that he had? Officially, none. And Babylon, I mean, Babylon came, and Jerusalem went into captivity, just as he spoke. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, now watch this. Now, this is not comical. And th how many warnings have we seen for Jehoshaphat yet? I lost count. But watch this warning. Ready? I will disguise myself. This is this is Ahab. I'm gonna I'm gonna go on a Halloween thing, okay? It's like Saul did. I'm gonna change my apparel. I'm gonna make myself look like somebody who I'm not. Actors and actresses on television. Even if it's a Baptist movie, I'm gonna change my disguise. And we'll go into battle. All right, that's not bad enough. All right. Just in case my K is right, just in case, I'm going to change my appearance, all right? They're not going to know who I am. But put on thy robes, Jehoshaphat. <laughs> it's like, if you ever see Gary's Larson, The Far Side, and he's got this one cartoon, and there's two bears, and there's a gun sight, and the bear's going, him, not me, him. And that is what Ahab's doing. He's saying, look, if my king is right, they're going to kill the wrong king, not me. They're going to kill you dress up as the king. You think I'm full of baloney? Then we'll read on. I'm not full of it. I've read the story. I've studied the story. King Ahab wants, wants Jehoshaphat dead and not him. Watch and learn. Read the black words and the white pages. Get yourself a King James Bible. Because watch what happens. I'm not full of it. So the king of Israel disguised himself. And they went into battle. Jehoshaphat, go home! It, what it, what did it just tell you by now, by Ahab's own words, that I believe Micaiah more than my own prophet? I want you to stick yourself out there like a sore thumb. I want you to just get on your horse and run back to Jerusalem. But you know what happens when you get friendship with the world? You get to love the world. And it gets like that snake that attacks you. And you know what? Once you got the poison inside your blood, you're going to die. Hey, it's hard to be separated. It's hard to divide yourself, but it's a lot better than what Jehoshaphat's going through. 
Do you imagine what's going through his mind that's not being recorded? Do you imagine he's about to go into this battle and he's thinking what Micaiah said? And he's thinking about these 400 lion prophets? And he's thinking about, I shouldn't really be here, but for my friend Ahab, for my darling Ahab, I'll stay in the battle and stay. I thank God for the heart that God's given me to stay in the battle. And listen, you want to fall behind? You fall behind. I'm going forward. I ain't letting nothing drag me. I'm going to keep on going. You jump on my bandwagon. I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to do right. Uh, Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua never had done this. Joshua said, Ahab, bye. I'm going to go serve God. Bye. I'll be down in Jerusalem if you want to learn right. <clears throat> now the king of Syria had commanded his captains of the chariots. The captains of the chariots. These are the leaders that were with him saying, Fight ye not with small great, save only with the king of Israel. Here are the orders for the battle for the day. Don't worry about anybody else. I want the king of Israel dead. That's the only order you got. Don't fight with anybody else unless you have to. King of Israel, you get him. Wow. Now this is unknown. This is this is the Syrian captain. This is Lord giving you extra information that King Ahab and King Jezebel. Uh, Jezebel King Je yeah, King, it should be King Jezebel. King Jehoshaphat don't know. King Jehoshaphat and King Ahab does not know the orders for the army is to get that king and only that king. And it came to pass when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat, why would they see Jehoshaphat? He was dressed like the king. See, Ahab put him out there as a th sore thumb. Ahab put Jehoshaphat out there to be killed. Because they're looking for the king. There's only one dressed up like the king. Do you know what your unsaved friends, relatives, cohorts are going to do to you? They're going to put you in a spot that's going to kill you. Because the, the main thing of man is myself. Me, myself, and I. Self-gratification when they don't have the Lord. They don't have the love of God. They don't know what it is to be saved. They'll put your neck on the line to save theirs. Get that and know that. I've been there and done that and been in it. They said, it is the king of Israel. No, it's not. Therefore they come past him. They circle him about to fight. But Jehoshaphat cried out. And the Lord helped him. And the God moved them to depart from it. The mercy of God and the grace of God, Jehoshaphat should have been killed. It wasn't for the mercy or grace of God. It wasn't for this act of kindness of God. Jehoshaphat would have been killed. Oops, got the wrong one. So sorry. Get that. Know that. Learn that. Only by the grace of God, the mercy of God, the love of God, Jehoshaphat is still alive. By, Jeho by Jehoshaphat's actions and what he's done so far, he should be dead in hell. He has not been doing right. He has not been doing what God wants him to do. For it came to pass that when the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Israel, they turned back again from pursuing him. So Jehoshaphat is led off. A certain man drew a bow at a venture. He picked up his bow, put the arrow in it. Poing! Doesn't even say he aimed. And smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness. 
That arrow went to where there was no armor. <laughs> the armor that was supposed to protect the king did not protect the king. And God was in that arrow. Smoke the king between the joints of the harness. Therefore he said to his chariot men, Turn thy hand, that thou mayest carry me out of the host, for I am wounded. And the battle increased that day, howbeit the king of Israel stayed himself up in his chariot against the Syrians until the evening, and about the time the sun going down, he died. Micaiah was the true prophet. Those 400 prophets were liars. Jehos Jehoshaphat was mistreated, was abused by the wrong, and God still protected him. And in the end, God's word prevailed. And all that we learn, what we learn about Satan and his men, and 400 prophets that lied, and one that did the truth, they followed the 400 more than they followed the truth. And that goes true for 2013, 2014, the Lord to tarry, 2015, that the Lord to tarry. And how many people, when the Antichrist will come, will fall for the Antichrist over what is right? And even the millennium when Jesus Christ is sitting on the throne in David's throne in Jerusalem, when the thousand years of reign is up and said Satan is let loose, what Satan do? He goes out and he finds a group of men that will follow him still. Men are more prone to follow Satan than they will of God. That's a sorry truth, but that is the truth. Why do people fall for religion? Second Chronicles 18, they want to. That's what they want. They don't want God. 